I'm just a goalkeeper. He was scared. He was blindfolded and bound to a chair. The last thing he remembers was that he was dragged into a black car while he was walking home. While he was dwelling in his dark thoughts, his cover was raised and his handcuffs were taken away. When his eyes adjusted to the lights, he sat at a table full of delicious food, surrounded by many well-dressed people. He said in fear, I'm just a goalkeeper. I just started my career and don't have much money yet. I will pay you anything you want. Give me time. A man with a sharp but intimidating look presented him with a cup of water and apologized, saying, That won't be necessary. We apologize for abducting you like this, but we wanted to have a word or two with you. The goalkeeper was silent, his brain racing. Who are those people? Are they criminals? Are they crazy fans? He was squeezing his brain for answers. Why is this happening to him? Life just smiled at him recently. He was an unknown goalkeeper in an unknown team who made a name for himself. He just signed a contract with a famous football team that brought him out of his country and put him into international attention. The sharp man said, Eat, son. We are happy that you joined our football team. We heard a lot about you. You have a promising career, and we can make your life very good. He stopped and pointed at the food, saying, Eat before it becomes cold. The goalkeeper had no appetite, but was scared to say no to those people. The food was a welcome distraction. His mother told him not to waste food. He grew up in a house where meat was a thing to celebrate. He started eating warily, and the shady people joined in. They were cheerful and loud. If the situation were different, it would have been a pleasant occasion. As time passed, the sharp man turned to business. We brought you here because you don't understand the situation. Our football team will meet its rival, the football club from the capital city. And as you know, we are not on good terms with the central government. We have been oppressed by it for far too long. We feel that we can do better alone. So, this game has more stakes than just sports. The sharp man raised the wine cup and said, For our national pride, the men raised their cups and cheered. He also raised his cup even though his heart wasn't in it. He knew of the political situation, but didn't think in his wildest dream that it may affect him. The sharp man turned serious and said, Losing this game is not an option if you know what I mean. He gave him a wide smile. How could a smile bring such terror to his heart? They didn't say anything after that, and they dropped him back at his place. Before they left, they wished him good luck in the coming game. Just like that, he was free again. But he wasn't free. He felt invisible chains around his neck, and the fact that nobody noticed his absence even though he was abducted in a busy street during the day was heartbreaking. Sleep didn't find a place in his troubled mind. The next day, he went to training and was different. He trained like it was his last day. His teammates were training like crazy, too. Had they had the same trip as him? He thought that joining a prestigious football team would make his life easier. But the higher you go, the more corrupt things become. This is not a sport anymore, it is a battlefield. They were training for their lives. The big day came, and fans of both clubs adjourned in the stadium. Tension was high, and he knew it wasn't only anticipation or delight. In the heart of those people, there was a hatred he didn't understand. They all had a reason to hate but couldn't explain it. Everyone reads from the same script, but nobody knows who wrote it. The game wasn't going well, and his team was on the back foot. The other team was pushing hard. It seemed the other team had the same motivation. He tried his best, defending with all his senses and fending ball after ball, but they were relentless. Then the rival team scored a goal. The masses went into a frenzy. He felt the stadium's weight on his shoulders. Panic hit him hard, and he started blaming everyone, and an argument broke out among the team members. They nearly exchanged blows, but the coach brought things into order. The coach said they should reclaim their temper or else everything is lost. The goalkeeper didn't know if this was a motivational speech or just stating the facts. When they returned to the field, his teammates were in berserk mode. They kept pushing and pushing until they scored a goal. He felt a heavy burden off his shoulders. Now we needed to score another goal. But the second goal didn't come from any side, and the second half was over. They went back to the field for extra time, which took forever, and his heart was pounding with every attack. He was exhausted but not physically. He could play for hours, but today was different. Every minute in this stadium was worth a year outside. His mind wandered, trying to escape. But he thought about the sharp man in the suit every time it happened, which was enough walking call. 
Then his team scored another goal and the fans raged in cheers. At that moment he started crying from happiness, the sweetest sound he had heard that day. But there was a scary silence from the other side of the stadium, and for the first time, he noticed the numerous police officers dressed in mope control equipment standing on both sides of the stadium. And the police officers were tense. His team's fans started taunting the other side and the other side got aggravated. Both sides started throwing garbage at each other and a fight broke out. The police officers rushed to break up the fights but all over the stadium. The fans spilled onto the field, which prompted the judge to pause the game and order the football players to leave. But chaos descended into the fields and he couldn't find his way out. Everyone, the football players, the fans, and the police officers pushed him around. Then a cloud of madness descended over everybody. Everyone was fighting the other. It didn't matter who or what they believed. Those people were not people anymore. He found a place to hide behind an ad post, and he slipped under it. The sound of violence filled his heart with terror, and he prayed they wouldn't find him. Then his cover was removed, and he saw people standing over him. He started begging for his life, saying, I'm just a goalkeeper. This is just a sport. Don't hurt me, please. But he was lucky. The police officers found him first and then took him to safety. He was brought back to the changing room with his teammates, and they were held there until the situation calmed down. He sat shaking in the chair, trying to fathom what had happened. He looked at the TV to watch the news. Any distraction was welcome. He didn't need to hear the news. He was living it. The TV showed the city's mayor disapproving of the fans' behavior and encouraging everyone to be patient and civilized. But the man was familiar to the goalkeeper. The mayor looked precisely like the sharp man. The goalkeeper watched sadly and thought, why must they drag an innocent game into their chaos? Isn't football supposed to bring people together? This world is going crazy. What do you think? Share it in the comment section below and subscribe for more. Yours. The Counselor S.F.T.G.